My name is Mark. I'm Samantha's husband. Colleen is my mother-in-law. I'll try to keep this short, but just by saying that, my wife is laughing. <laughs> I want to stand here on behalf of the family and thank you all for, for this wonderful place, this wonderful home. It is not only your home, but you make it the home of everyone else who is here. If you weren't here, it would just be a building and a lot. You're beautiful. And a lot of thanks have been given. I just I want to give one particular thanks, being a musician myself, to Gary. I don't know how many of you realize how many hours he sat in his bedroom as a young boy, and I haven't even talked to him, but I know the story. Till, and played and practiced that guitar until his fingers bled. And then calluses would form, and he'd finally get that C chord, which is the chord that killed my guitar career. I can't get it. But he mastered the guitar. And not only did he master that guitar, he now shares his singing talents and his playing talents. And he's forgotten all the hard work that went into that. And he just blesses you. And I appreciate your, your talent, Gary. Thank you very much. I want to tell you a story about a guy named Jasper. You don't know him, but he was, he was a little old man that lived in a little house in a valley next to a creek. It was a cute little house. He loved his little home. He'd had a tough life, but he'd finally got a little home. And he spent all of his time serving other people. He'd go and fix things for the widows or go teach a young couple how to make their washing machine work. And he grew a garden. We heard a little bit about gardens from BJ. And he loved his home. And one day it started to rain. And Jasper looked out the window and he goes, well, great, it's raining today. I won't have to go out and water the garden. Nature will do it for me. Well, the rain kept coming and the rain kept coming and he noticed that the stream was getting pretty full and his garden was right next to this, to this stream. And he noticed that it was overflowing the banks and the water was starting to flood the garden. And he thought, well, maybe it's a time to pray. This man, Jasper, was a God-fearing man. He knew the Lord. And he had spent his whole life trying to follow Jesus. But now his garden was flooding, the garden he used to feed other people. And he told the Lord, will you please, Lord, rescue my garden, save it. I don't need to lose my garden. But the waters kept rising and rising and rising until pretty soon he realized his entire house was surrounded by water. And he started thinking, Lord, I need you to rescue my, me from this flood that's surrounding my house. And I need to get out of this. And I don't like this. I built this. This is my home. About that time, a man r rode by in a rowboat. And he said, Jasper, hop in. I'll get you out of here. The, the water is rising. I'll get you out of here. And he said, no, I prayed to the Lord. I know the Lord is going to rescue me from this disaster. So... Thanks for the rowboat. And the rowboat took off. Pretty soon Jasper realized the water was on the first floor. And pretty soon he realized he had to run upstairs to get out of the water. His TV was floating and all his other good things were floating. And on the second floor he opened the window and he prayed to the Lord, Lord, please help me with my house. These things are important to me. I'm, I'm losing everything. And I've done so much for so many people. Please, just help me save my house. About that time, the water was still pretty low enough. A fire truck came by. It was a hook and ladder. And the ladder came up. Jasper, jump on the ladder. Come down. We'll get you out of here. Your house is flooded. He said, no, I know the Lord's going to take care of me. I know he's going to rescue me. The fire truck took off because they had to get to higher ground. Pretty soon, the water was up to the second floor. And now Jasper's up on the roof. Lord, I need some help. I need to get out of this situation. Please, 
Everything I have is here, and it's all going. About that time, helicopter came by. Drop the ladder. Jasper, grab the ladder. Let me get you out of here. Jasper says, no. I know the Lord is going to get me out of this. I have faith in him. I know he's going to get me out of this. Kind of like what BJ was talking about. Helicopter took off. About that time, the foundation of the house gave way. Whole thing collapsed. Jasper goes into the water, into the flood. Next thing Jasper knows, he's standing in front of pearly gates. And the gates open up wide. And there's a man standing there. And I would like to correct some false doctrine you'll hear from time to time about who's standing at that gate. It's not St. Peter. It's the Savior. It's Jesus. When that gate opened, and Jasper saved Jesus, he was a little sad. And he said, Lord, I was trying to do what you wanted me to do, and things didn't go well. I was trying so hard to take care of those things, take care of people, and when I needed you, the floods took everything. And the Lord looked at him with a, a, a smile, and he said, Jasper, you prayed. I sent you a rowboat. I sent you a fire truck, and I sent you a helicopter, and you rejected them. But the Savior put his arm around Jasper, and he said, You're here a little early, but I'm glad you're here. I have a mansion for you. Come on in. It's in a valley. It has a stream. There's tomatoes growing. Colleen had a tough life. We haven't really talked about it much, but somewhere in her early years, her spirit was broken, and her ambition was broken, and she really struggled. She spent her, her life pretty much alone. But somewhere in all of that, because of the teachings of her mother, she found the Savior in all of her disappointments all of her frustrations, she found Jesus Christ. You know that. Those of you who know that, who know her know that. And she prayed. She prayed for her daughter, Samantha, more than anything. She prayed for her. She prayed that Samantha would find a good man, a God-fearing man. When I met Samantha, Samantha and Desiree were in a lot of trouble. They were stuck in a situation that they didn't know how they were going to get out of. And Colleen had been praying for a man to come along. And then I show up. What a disappointment. <laughs> He's a Mormon. Oh, Lord, how could you possibly... Well, all my prayers send a Mormon to get Samantha out of this trouble. Well, let me tell you this. I know Jesus Christ. I feel His presence here. I love BJ. I've only met him twice. But what a man of God all the things he could be doing with his life, he's with you. <laughs> you are beautiful. You are so beautiful. Even you bald-headed guys back there, you're gorgeous. Don't worry, I'm on my way. But let me tell you about, so I was the rowboat, okay? Let me tell you about the fire truck and the helicopter that was sent to, to Colleen. One of the most, it's already been mentioned, but one of the greatest blessings in Colleen's life, in my life, in Samantha's life, and Desiree's life, is that cousin Ramona. That angel. A lonely angel. Forgive me for saying this, but her relationship with her, with her family and her mom has also been strained over the years. 
but she is soft and beautiful and open to the spirit. And she decided she was going to find Colleen. And she found her. And she wasn't, Colleen wasn't receptive to Ramona at first. She wasn't happy about it. But Colleen doesn't say no. I mean, no. Ramona doesn't say no. Ramona, you are a blessing. Samantha and her mom were able to sit down over the last five, five weeks of her life and discuss everything except the things that separated them. It was like there was an edit in that time, and they just picked up. Colleen would try and apologize or talk about those things, and Samantha would just say, Mom, shh, we're together now. And the helicopter is Decision House. You rescue people. You rescue human beings. Not just those of you who administer the place, but those of you who walk out of your door and knock on the door next door and say, Hi, how was your day? You are beautiful people. And BJ told me some of the most important words that I could have possibly ever heard in my life. He told me that in a talk with Colleen, he told her, she told him that it was okay that Samantha had married me. You can see how happy Samantha is, and that was okay. Now if I can just get a whole bunch of my other friends to say that it's all right that she married me. I've taken enough time, and I love you. I don't know you. I don't have to know you to love you. Because you loved my mother-in-law. You've taken us in. I don't know when we'll ever see you here again, but I bear witness and testimony to you that we will all rise in the resurrection. We will meet each other. We will take each other and embrace. We'll hug each other. And the most often overheard comment that's going to be heard in heaven is, Wow, I didn't know you'd be here. <laughs> Thank you very much. On behalf of the family, we'll probably have a chance to hug each of you before we, before we go. But thank you. And I thank the Lord publicly for this beautiful weather, very bearable day that we have today. And I make these comments. And I say them. In the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.